Okay, we have retained another integral. This one's from JE Main 2003. We have the integral from zero to one of x times one minus x to the n dx. Okay, now you may notice that this thing right here, this is set up exactly for us to use the beta function. It's in the exact form, exact right bounds, but it's also in pretty good shape to do a u substitution. Now, I have no idea which one's better. I probably prefer a beta function, so therefore let's do the u substitution. I'll probably do both, I don't know. It doesn't really matter. So, I don't know, let's just try the u substitution way first and then I'll think about what's gonna happen next. So first we'll substitute here, this'll be our u. If we do that, let me get a value for x because we're gonna need it over here. x is gonna be the same thing as one minus u. Take a derivative, dx is gonna be minus du. And one other thing you may notice, this u substitution is exactly the same as doing King's principle, but I already kind of wrote it out, so let's just do the u substitution. So when you do this, if you plug one in here, the upper bound's gonna be zero. You plug zero and the lower bound's gonna be one. For the x value, this becomes one minus u here. And then this part here is just going to become u to the n du, or actually minus du. But then with the minus sign, I can use that and take it over here and use it to flip the bounds. And now at this point, this is pretty nice because we actually kind of simplified this and brought the exponent over here. Different variable, of course, but that doesn't bother us. And now what that allows us to do is now we can just multiply in the u to the n. So when we do that, this is going to transform into just u to the n minus, multiplying these together, we get u to the n plus one du. But now we can just go ahead and integrate this using power rule. The n's is just the n's just a constant. So for the first one, it's gonna be u n plus one over n plus one. Integrating the second one, it's gonna be u plus one on the exponent, it's gonna be n plus two over n plus two. We just need to evaluate from zero to one. Well, we plug in zeros, that's gonna be nothing with the u's in the numerator, so don't worry about that. We plug in one, 1 to the n plus 1 is just 1, so I'm going to write this as 1 over n plus 1 minus 1 over n plus 2, and that's it. And now next I'll move on to method number 2. We'll do this using the beta function real quick and see if we can get back to the same answer. Now, one thing we need to do, we just need to do a slight change on the exponents. So like on the exponent here on x, that's going to be a 1. Well, what I can do instead is write this as 2 minus 1. And then here on the n, we can write this as n plus 1 n minus one, just because the beta function, this is gonna be our input, we're gonna need that n plus one value in this too. So then we'll go right to our formula for the beta function on this. What we're gonna have is, we're gonna use this first value, gamma of two, times the second one, gamma of n plus one over here, and then over the sum of these, so this is gonna be gamma of n plus three. But then now to get the simplification, we could have done it like directly as factorials, but I'm gonna use this formula instead that says gamma of n plus one is gonna be equal to n factorial, even though assuming that n, we usually wanna be an integer. I don't know if that was an assumption of the problem, but I'm not gonna worry about that too much. We're just gonna use this on this here. So transforming it for gamma of two, then putting in terms of factorial, that's just gonna be one factorial. Then for gamma of n plus one, that's exactly this. This is gonna be n factorial. And then here on this gamma of n plus three, I can write that as n plus two factorial. One factorial is just one, we don't have to worry about that. Copy over n factorial. For n plus two factorial, I can break this up. I can write it as n plus two times n plus one times n factorial. n factorials cancel, and so we're left with our final solution of just one over n plus two times n plus one. And then at this point, you might be wondering, how is this solution equal to this right here? Well, we can do just a little bit of manipulation on this. Let's take this one and get a common denominator. So for one over n plus one, I can multiply that first part as n plus two over n plus two. And then for this here, for one over n plus two, I can multiply in by n plus one over n plus one times the n plus two. Now we have a common denominator, so we can write this as n plus two in the numerator, distribute in the minus sign, so minus n minus one over this stuff, but then the n's are gonna cancel. Two minus one in the numerator just gives me one over n plus one times n plus two, and that's the same thing we found right there. Okay, there you go, two different methods on a problem from JE Main 2003. Thanks everyone for watching, have a good day.